Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I wanted to make uh, our first midterm review video uh, covering part one. Um, I really hope this helps. Let's get started. Alrighty, jumping in on this first example here. I want to point out that um, we're simplifying this radical. Now, with simplifying radicals, guys, the first thing you want to do is look at this number underneath the, the square root and determine if it is a square root itself. In this case, negative 125 is not. All right, so we need to factor this whole entire thing. So when factoring it, guys, we're going to factor this to figure out what perfect square is a <coughs> factor of 125. And when we do that, we also we're going to factor out this negative 1 right here. And the factors I'm going to choose for 125 is um, 25 times 5. Sorry about that. There we go. So we factor our negative 1. Then we got the square root of 25 and the square root of 5. Because again, 25 times 5 is 125. All right. Now, I can solve this one. And this one, I can simplify those two. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of negative 1 is i. Now for this one, the square root of negative, um, I assume the square root of 5 is just the square root of 5. There is, there's no square root of 5. So again, a 5i radical 5 would be the simplified version of the square root of negative 125. For number two, same deal, man. You want to factor what's in the parentheses here. All right, so outside I have negative four. Right here I have the square root of negative one. And then we have the square root. Of, we get the square root of nine, which is a perfect square, and the square root of six. Okay. Now we can simplify this. See, all this is multiplication. So we have negative four. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 6 is still the square root of 6. Now this part out here, because it's always been multiplication, even right here is multiplication, we can multiply what's on the outside. That's going to give us negative 12i, square root of 6. Alright, now for this problem here, number three. Number three, we have a complex number added to a complex number. Well, remember, you add the real parts. All right, so two plus, or excuse me, five plus two is seven. And then you add the imaginary parts. Three I plus seven I is 10 I, okay? Over here, we're going to subtract the complex numbers. The first thing you need to do is, is to distribute the negative right here. Distribute the negative. So we have 5 plus 8i minus 2 minus 2i. So now we're going to evaluate the real parts. So that's 5 minus 2 is 3. And then we're going to evaluate the imaginary parts 8i minus 2i. Alright, 8i minus 2i. And doing so, we're going to get um, 6i. Okay. Alright, number five. Number five, guys, this i, this is not our standard variable. This is i to the square root of 38. Right here we have i, the imaginary number i to the 38th power. Now, if you remember, alright, we got to go back over our i chart, guys. I equals i. i squared equals negative 1. i cubed equals negative i. And i to the fourth equals positive 1. Alright. Um, i negative 1, negative i 1. Okay. Now, the quarter method tells us that we can take 38 
All right, I'm going to figure this out, okay? I'm going to take 38 and divide by 4. All right, and when I do that, I get 9.5. Okay, 9.5. Now, see how this is 0 0.5, 0 0.50? All right, well, if you think about quarters, 50 cents is two quarters. So I want to look at this. All right, because this is two quarters, that means that I to the 38, side of the degree is two, so two quarters. All right, I squared equals negative one. So I to the 38th equals negative one. I'm not sure how much you remember, but let's say, you just look at the quarter method, okay? All right, if something is 0.25, that's one quarter. All right, so the decimal is 0.25, that's I. If it's 0.50, that's two quarters. So that's uh, negative one. If it's 0.75, then it's going to be negative I. And if it's 0 0.0, all right, or a whole, then it's just one, guys. All right. But anyway, I'm just quickly reviewing that so you guys can see the quarter method bringing that back up, okay? But anyway. Right here, number six, we're going to distribute 4i. So 4i times negative two is negative 8i. And 4i times negative 8i is going to be negative 24. I'm sorry. Man, look at my math off today. Ah, there we go. Minus, oh, 32 i squared because i times i is i squared now if you remember i squared is the same thing as negative one so now i have negative one times negative 32 which will become positive 32 and then i have minus 8i now the reason i wrote it like this is because remember standard form for complex numbers is a plus or minus bi but in this case it's minus so 32 minus 8i All right, right here. We have, uh, we need to solve this for the missing variables. If you look, we have the missing variable X, or we have the missing variable Y, okay? Um, the thing I want you to do when setting this up is you see how this is not an I? Where on the right side do you see an I? All right. If you if you look, you have an I right here. I'm gonna set those equal to each other because see how this is an equal sign. I can set nine I equal to six X I like that, okay? And then if you see the rest, you have thirty six and you have four Y. So you have thirty six equals four Y. The first thing you do again is look for stuff that has an I. Set them equal to each other, okay? After that, take everything else, set them equal to each other, okay? So right here, I'm gonna solve for x. I'm gonna divide by six i, okay? And what happens is everything on the left cancels, and I'm left with x. And on the right side, i's are gonna cancel out, and I have nine over six. Nine over six reduces to three over two. So that's x, 3 over 2. Over here on the right side, solving for the variable y, I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. Okay, so y is by itself. And 36 divided by 4 is going to be 9. So 9 equals y, all right, or y equals 9. Doesn't matter, but those are our two missing variables, okay? All right, over here, I have a four-lane situation, okay? I like to expand all my four-lane problems, okay? So I'm going to go three times one plus four I, and then I'm going to go plus two I times one plus four I. All right, I just like to write it out, all right? This will help you with four-lane. It's not too strong suit. So right here, we distribute the three. We get three times one is three. 3 times 4i is going to be 12i. 
Over here, we have positive 2i times 1, that's positive 2i, and positive 2i times positive 4i is going to be uh, positive 8, sorry about that, positive 8, bear with me, alright, here we go, plus 8i squared, because i times i is i squared. Now, you're going to combine like terms here, and we're also going to convert i squared to negative 1. So we have 3 plus 12i plus 2i is going to be 14i, and i squared is negative 1. So I have plus 8 times negative 1. Now, 8 times negative 1 is going to be negative 8. So you have 3 plus 14i minus 8. So now, to simplify this all the way, you have 3 minus 8, that's negative 5, plus 14i. Alright, I know that seems like a lot, but I just want to be very thorough in my explanation, okay? Now, for this problem right here, oops, Um, we're going to use the conjugate all right, of the denominator. Remember when? So, with using the um, with using the complex conjugate or the conjugate, excuse me, of the denominator. You remember, you're only going to change the operation sign in front of the imaginary part. So, what we do here is let me make this bigger. do is we're going to multiply by negative 3 plus 2i at the top and the bottom. Find the conjugate. Now at the top here, you need to foil. Alright, so when you do that, you got 5 times negative 3, negative 15, 5 times 2i, 10i, negative 2i times negative 3 and negative 2i times uh, positive 2 is going to be negative 4i squared down at the bottom alright for this so you have 9 minus 6i plus 6i minus 4i squared. Now we simplify this. Hey, what's up? Hey, now this part of the video I had to add real quick because I made a mistake right here. All right, so right here real quick, here's where the video is right now. All right, I made a mistake. I previously did not write this negative down in my next step, which is a mistake that I see readily on. Repetitively, excuse me, on everyone's uh, stuff, man. So <laughs> I, I did the same thing, guys. I get it. All right, so let's be mindful of our signs, all right? But anyway, right here, the negative um, i squared is excuse me, i squared is negative one. All right, right here, i squared is negative one. So what we get here is negative fifteen. Uh, combined like terms, ten i plus six i is going to be sixteen i. A negative 1 times negative 4 is going to be a positive 4. Okay? Now, when you look down here, um, you have 9, negative 6i plus 6i. Guys, that's 0. Okay? So, I don't, I'm not going to write 0. And right here, i squared times negative 4 is positive 4. Okay? So, now, we simplify. Look at your like terms. Now, you have negative 15 plus 4. That's going to be negative 11. And then we have plus 16i. And at the bottom, 9 plus 4 is 13. All right, so there's your solution for number 9, all right? Now, back to the original video. All right, we have, remember you want to take 46 and divide it by 4. And 46 divided by 4 is going to be... 
11.5. All right. So again, see how this is 0.5? If you remember what we did earlier, all right, when it's 0.5, that's two quarters, which means I squared, which is negative one. So I said a 46 equals negative one. All right. Now. Right here. Um, remember the power to a power rule? See all these exponents right here? Well, first off, let's do the parentheses. See this x to the negative 4 right here? I want to move that to the bottom. The x to the negative 4. All right, so I have 2. Oh, and the reason I move this is so it can move positive. Remember, if it's negative here, move it to the bottom, then it's positive. If it's, pos if it's negative here, move it up top, it'll be positive. All right, so 2x to the negative 4. We're gonna move x to the negative four to the bottom. So it's x to the fourth, now it's positive. Right here we have y to the seventh, and down here we have five y to the fifth, okay? Oops, stop. Q. All right, so Q, there we go. So now, what I wanna do first is I'm gonna simplify the parentheses. See this Y to the seventh and Y to the fifth? All right, well, because they're division, all right, like you have Y to the seventh, all over Y to the fifth. What happens is all these cancel out, and I'm just writing it out for you so you can see it. All, right, all those will cancel. So I'm really left with y squared, which will stay at the top since the larger values at the top. So seven minus five is two. So I have two, this is just my arrow guys, two y squared all over five x to the fourth. All right, and now all this is raised to the cube, all right? Now, what we have here is we're gonna cube everything in the parentheses. Apply this, okay? So what you do is two cube, well here I was gonna write it out, but let's do it, let's go and do it. Two cube, two times two times two. That's four, four times two is eight. So eight, and then remember power to a power, this two and that three, where you're gonna multiply them, so that's y, to the six, power to the five, you multiply. And right here, five cubed, that's five times five times five. Well, five times five is 25, and 25 times five is 125. All right, and then you have x to the fourth. Well, power to the power, four cubed, four, four times three is going to be x to the 12. All right, so there, so our final answer right here. All right, for this one, man, a lot of simplifying right here. Let's see what we can get done. First of all, 10 over 5 reduces. 10 is divisible by 5, so it's 15. So 10 over 15 gives me uh, 2 over 3. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now, remember what the rules are with the exponents. Um at the top here, see how this is negative? I want to move it to the bottom. See how this is negative down here? I want to move it to the top. And then, here, let me just do one thing at a time. So x squared, um, z cubed, and then right here, I move that three up there. So z cubed. And then right here, you have y to the fifth, and y squared. All right, I moved the negative to the bottom and it's negative to the top, okay? So now, right here, combine like terms. You have two, and then right here you have, um, ooh, you see what I did right here? X cubed at the bottom. There we go. So I have two, X squared, and then Z and Z cubed. You add the exponents. I'm multiplying these. So I add the exponents. 
3 plus 3 is 6. Right here, 5 plus 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. All right, now I just need to deal with these X's. Right here, I'm going to subtract the larger one. Three minus two, I'm going to subtract from the larger one. Three minus two is one. All right, so these two at the top, over these three at the bottom, if you look, these will cancel, which means there's one left at the bottom. So I have two. Oh, that's a Z, guys. Man, look at me, I'm sorry. I did not mean to write X right here. I don't want to confuse anybody. That should be Z to the six. No, anyway, three minus two is, is one left at the bottom. So I have two Z all over three X, Y to seven. All right, there was no way to cancel out these two, but those did, okay, so there we go. Sorry, y'all, it's late, it's like 10.30, so. I may make some mistakes. All right, for this one, find the complex conjugate. Man, all you gotta do is identify the imaginary part, change the sign, the operation sign in front of it. So I have negative eight minus 10i. All right, make sure it's in standard form, a plus bi. All right, bi, all right. There's the conjugate, negative eight minus 10i. Now, 5 minus 2i. Alright, we need to write this in standard form. Again, change the sign in front of the operation sign. We get 5 plus 2i. Alright. Well, that concludes this video, guys. Um, tune in for parts uh, 2, 3, and 4. I want to break each part up to their own video, okay? And I hope this helps, okay?